uh, our ranch where we have horses and other animals is in Glen Allen, California, and we were right in the epicenter of the Nuns Fire and the Tubbs Fires in October. We are not a cart or a dart. What we are is a grassroots organization that was started at the end of 2013 to help our community, our local community in Sonoma County, be better prepared for a disaster and also to help large animals, particularly equines and cattle, in individual emergencies. Our county does not have a community emergency response program. It has no uh, CERT teams or CERT programs. It has no animal emergency response teams and no disaster animal response teams. So we turn to our local fire department. We've developed a really strong relationship with the fire department. And uh, for the last three and a half years, we have facilitated animal technical rescue trainings for not only our fire departments in Sonoma Valley, but throughout the state and a few in some other states as well. We're really involved in community outreach and education, trying to get people to work better together, to collaborate with their local agencies and get the agencies, the NGOs, the individuals, the veterinarians, the horsemen's associations, cattlemen's associations, wool growers, everybody on the same page so that people are better prepared. To that end, um, I'm an event planner in my day job, so to that end, we produce an event called Ranch Readiness Day. Um, this year will be our fourth event in five years, and uh, now it's expanded to three days. This year it'll be the Ranch Readiness Summit. It combines training opportunities, education, continuing education courses, public outreach, equipment demonstrations, so a lot of what you have going on here. Um, so we'll just run a um, little slideshow with a little bit of video that gives you a flavor of Ranch Readiness Day if you want to come up. This year it's May 17th, 18th, 19th in Sonoma County. We'd love to have you. So this is in Sonoma County, at the, in Santa Rosa at the Sonoma County Fairgrounds last year. Uh, the year before we actually held this event at a, a facility that is called Schoen Farm. It's a part of the Santa Rosa Junior College. It's the agricultural teaching facility. Um, two years before that, we actually had it at our ranch. Uh, I just wanted a little neighborhood event. Thought I'd get 40 or 50 people. We had about 150. Since then, uh, it's grown. We had about 300 this year or last year. Um, right here, oh, that was Dr. John Madigan. That's me. Um, a year ago, FEMA awarded us the Individual and Community Preparedness Award for our work of uh, trying to educate and help underserved communities, i.e. rural communities and horse and livestock owners be better prepared. So we actually have people talking here. <laughs> So this just gives people who are attending the event an idea of the various types of animal emergency response resources that are available. You have your animal technical rescue, you have your com uh, community animal response teams, you have trained firefighters and other first responders, you have veterinarians, you have vert students, uh, veterinary students and veterinarians and equipment manufacturers and lots and lots of community members. So got photographs here of actual responses, uh, trainings, a lot of people getting together, trailer extrications, things that people who have spoken before me today have talked about and introduced you to. Um, our takeaway message really is that if you work and play together, it's all going to be better. And I have to tell you guys, I am in awe and really envious of the spirit of friendship and collaboration that we see here in this room and that I've seen over the last month and a half among the groups responding to the just unimaginable series of events that you have had in Southern California, most particularly Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. Um, I last year was asked to participate in a conference at CSU back in Fort Collins and uh, I had a had a opportunity to sit in a wonderful meeting with a whole lot of resources ranging from the cooperative ag extension advisors, state veterinarian, 
uh, um, USDA in Colorado, uh, Department of Agriculture people, and I was introduced to a term I wasn't familiar with. So how many people here think you know what PPE is? Raise your hand, what's PPE to you? <laughs> you learn a new one every day, okay. There is, a, there is another definition of PPE that I learned, and it was the most useful acronym I have learned in a long time. So PPE can be personal protective equipment, but, who, wait, someone just said something. People, politics, and egos. I cannot take credit for that. That was uh, given to me by a veterinarian who now works for the state of Colorado, and it's the best acronym that I have learned, and if you keep that in mind, that that's what you're dealing with, um, it may not get better, but it might. And what I see here in this building on this property today is a lot of people have set that aside and you are working together. Um, the second week of the Northern California wildfires, um, we actually sheltered in place. I'll talk about that for a minute because I have some interesting uh, things to add to the conversation. But Aside from a few deployments with the UC Davis Veterinary Emergency Response Team, my husband and I did not leave our ranch. We did not see or talk to anybody else other than a few random um, animal control officers whom we were providing assistance to for uh, welfare checks until the second weekend when we were able to get out of Sonoma Valley to get up to UC Davis because a year ago I had been lined up to speak at an international conference on animals in disasters. So that took place the second week into our fire. So that was an experience. So I arrived at Davis uh, looking like a lot of you guys here. <laughs> that was, I, I got to the hotel and that was my second shower in uh, 11 days. That was an experience. Um, but at that conference, uh, I encountered a lot of terrific people from around the country and around the world who have been working in these fields for a very long time, trying to get collaboration, trying to get consistency in training, trying to get consistency in standards for equipment, trying to find ways to do it better. And a woman uh, that I had been um, corresponding with, had never met, had read a lot of the things that she'd written, I had the opportunity to meet there, and her name is Dr. Um, Betsy McConico. I don't know if any of you, you may know of her. So she is a very, very um, well-known authority on emergency management, emergency veterinary medicine, disaster response from Missouri, who now heads up the Louisiana State Animal Response Team, LSART. And the motto of LSART, and this is a, a state that has a lot of big emergencies, a huge equine population, a huge cattle population. Their motto, it's right on their website, you can look it up. It's amazing what you can accomplish when nobody cares who gets the credit. And I really try to hold that. It's really hard, you know, when everybody is fighting for fundraising dollars, everybody wants the recognition, the media is out there with their cameras looking to make heroes out of people who maybe aren't doing it exactly the right way. But when nobody cares who gets the credit and everybody is working toward the same goal, the outcomes are amazing. And I applaud everybody here, Santa Barbara, Ventura County, LA, San Diego, but really particularly what I see here. You've got people from San Luis Obispo County who have reached out to the entire community of animal control officers, animal services, law enforcement, first responders, firefighters, community members, and veterinarians who are working with you. You guys kind of have the model here, and I, I just want you to be able to hold that in, take that, and, um, and know how valuable it is, and encourage you to keep that moving forward. I'm ready to move down here now. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about sheltering in place. Um, I, I have content here, but I think that I can add a little bit more value to the conversation 
that has already taken place about sheltering in place. So I am a member of two CARTs. I am a member of NAVDAG, the North Valley Animal Disaster Group, which has been around for a very long time. We are an all animal disaster response group based in Butte County and our mission is to serve Butte County. We um, are activated by Butte County Animal Services. That is a county, it's about three and a half hours away from where I live, but it was the closest animal emergency response group, uh, the closest cart to our area and offered the best training. So I am on the evac team, so is my husband. He's a very good hauler. We have behind the fire line training. Uh, we also go in and provide welfare checks, sometimes with an escort, sometimes without. We are activated by animal services and we are working very, very closely with the fire service incident command or the unified command for the event, depending upon the circumstances. So we're very well trained. We have to maintain our training. Uh, when I leave here, I'm heading back home, getting into a different car, heading up to Chico for a training on Monday. Um, we are constantly reinforcing when you are told you may have to evacuate, go. However, where we live in Glen Ellen, in Sonoma Valley, we live in an area that is very, very close to, just a couple of miles away from a major fault. Uh, we are also an area that is right in the middle of a wildfire urban intersect. So we not only have an evacuation plan, we have a zero advance notice plan in case there's an earthquake, in case there's a slide. What do we do if we have to shelter in place? So on the night of October 8th at about 10 o'clock, um, I looked out the window, the wind was incredible, like nothing I had ever experienced um, anywhere, and I saw flames. Saw flames before there was smoke, before there was an alert, before there was a siren, before anything. I got on the phone, I was number one or number two to call it in along with our next door neighbors. We live in a rural area with subdivisions directly across California State Highway 12, we live at the corner of Highway 12 and Nuns Canyon. So the largest fire in the October wildfires in Northern California was the Nuns Fire. Cal Fire has just determined that that fire started about 250 yards from our back door. So our ranch is 70 acres. Our house is on the north end of the ranch. Our horses are in, uh, all kept in pastures. We have a large barn, a wood barn, and a large partially covered arena, which is all metal uh, panels, metal fencing, and a metal structure. So our earthquake plan and our wildfire plan for the fires over there, we're not going to be getting on the highway, we're going to stay here because it's the safest place. That is what saved us. We had less than seven minutes from the time I walked out the back door, saw flames, was hit in the face by winds, which we later learned were determined to be a category one hurricane with sustained winds averaging 76 miles an hour. The fire that was in our backyard, Cal Fire has now stated was moving at around 103 feet per second at that time. We had no time. We had a plan. It saved us, our six horses and a mule, and our two cats. We got out of our house, we got everybody out of their pastures, we got everybody, including the cats in their crates, into an arena, we staged our vehicles down there, we spent the next 20 hours fighting the fire. Our local fire resources um, were very, very um, present during the beginning of the fire and knew that we were there, um, told us to leave our house, they could not save it. We left our house went to the other end of the ranch, thought that was it, we'd never see our house again. Um, by a bunch of miracles, mainly the wind dying down, we went back the next day and found our house was still there. But for two weeks, we stayed at our property, helping to defend our property, along with a string of other uh, ranchers, all of us located on the eastern slope of the Sonoma Valley, right at the foot of the Mayacama mountain range. Um, by that time, the fire was heavily involved in Napa, very involved to the north of us. 
There were many days and nights in which we had fire 360 degrees. There were fires in every direction we looked. But because we had a plan, because we had equipment, we were safe, our animals were safe, we came through it, our animals came through it, we learned there are things we could have done better, and there are things that, God forbid, we should ever have to do it again. We will do better. But everything that everybody has said before me today, do it. I cannot stress enough the value of having plans. Um, my husband, who's somewhere over here, sitting over there, thought that for the last several years, I was a bit paranoid. I was getting a little obsessive. The night of the fire, he told me to stop barking orders. I told him we could have that discussion and argument later on in our relationship if we survived. A um, Couple of weeks later, we had a FEMA film crew traveling with us documenting uh, what had happened in our area. And I ever heard my husband, who told me the night of the fire to stop barking orders, tell the guy from FEMA, yeah, she was really organized. She knew exactly what to do and she got us all together. And I thought, wow. <laughs> So um, don't be afraid to be the person who steps up and takes charge in your family, at your barn. They can get mad at you later, but if you are the person who breathes, as someone said earlier, gets that oxygen into your brain, bring everything down here, look around you, check your list, go over it twice, you will save yourself, your animals, and all the people around you. But it all comes down to planning, and in the bigger picture, part of that planning involves getting along with everybody in your community who has a common goal of being better prepared, being safe, and doing it by working well together. So I thank you all for setting a really great example. Um, would love to invite you to come up to the Ranch Home and Ranch Readiness Summit this year in Santa Rosa in May. A lot of good campgrounds. We don't have a lot of hotels left. Um, and we do um, facilitate training, education. We sometimes offer scholarships to first responders who are interested in animal technical rescue. Uh, we work with the training resources that many people here have trained with. It's the Large Animal Rescue Company, John and Deb Fox out of Hollister. Uh, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them, but I really came here to learn from all of you. So thank you for sharing. thing about Ranch Readiness Day and about Culture Fund is it really is about making connections between livestock owners and volunteers and first responders to, to do a, an even better job. That's what this day is all about.